Folks, I wanted to do a funny intro. I had commissioned the Boston Philharmonic to play Megalovania for this Orchest video, but you all said no, Joseph. We want to know when the Quarantine Series signups are going up. So, consider this your reminder. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine Series, the eighth installment, will be held this Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Signups go up on the community page of this YouTube channel at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which, if I've done my uploading math correctly, should be right about now. If you want to play, pause this video, click that link, and then come back and give me ad revenue. Alright, play the Orcus noise. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. We've had a lot of fun this past month, haven't we? Flower Cardian, Coelacanth, Mass Market Hysteria on the behalf of speculators who take a replay YouTuber's word as gospel truth, but I think it's time to get serious. After Rise of the Duelist, there will be a mad dash to find the best deck not named at Emancipator or Eldritch, and I think the blind second tools released in this Covidian box might just bring an old friend back to the forefront. Presenting... Machina Orchest Mech Knight. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll make sure that the short printed secret is a Gaia card. So here's the list, and yes, we're playing 60 cards, but trust me, they basically all do the same thing. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's observe Orcist. Orcist is a deck with the longevity of Zodiac. It survived the banning of Nightmare Mermaid, the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish, and Orcus Tarp Horror, and while it's not exactly the power player it was during Toss format, it's still strong thanks to the unreal density of its starters. The Machina engine, thanks to Redeployment, the Mech Knight engine, thanks to Gearsu, and the Scrap engine that's been a mainstay of the deck for several formats now, all get your plays off to the races. The inexorable passage of time hasn't just improved the quality of starter, however, it's also improved the quality of combo enablers. Scrap Wyvern, Mech Knight Morningstar, and Lib the Counter-Revolutionary all feature heavily in the deck's setup combos, which at this point are capable of firing Recycler upwards of 30 times in a single turn. Spiral could never! However, the astute among you might have recognized a commonality among these combo enablers. They are super disappointing when going first, and bannably strong on the backswing. Wyvern gets to pop cards, Lib gets to shuffle, and of course, Mech Knight gets to play the game in the first place. More importantly than new end bosses or setup tools, Rise of the Duelist includes two of the most powerful blind second tools ever printed, Triple Tactics Talent and Just One Forbidden Drop. By making use of these massive haymakers, as well as the tried and true blind second tools like Lightning Storm, Urgent Schedule, and 12 hand traps, we can assemble a well-oiled machine capable of resolving Scrap Recycler through even the most pesky Ad Emancipator setups. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the Machinas. Citadel, Metal Cruncher, Megaform, and Irritator, the four required to consistently add Scrap Recycler to your hand. Next are the Mech Knights, three of Lil Gearsu, three of Purple, two of Blue, and an Indigo. After that are the Orchists, three Nightmare, two Skeleton, and two World Wand. Lastly, the Scraps, 3 Recycler, a Fridge, Jet Synchron, this guy, and our love letter to the format, 9 Hand Traps, 3 Nibiru, 3 Ash Blossom, and 3 Ghost Ogre. I'm not losing to Numeron, okay? For spells, we're on 3 Lightning Storm, 3 Triple, 3 Drop, 3 Urgent Schedule, 3 Redeployment, 3 Called by the Grave, and 1 ofs of Babel, Return, Foolish, and Succession. Finally, we're on 3 Infip. In the extra, we're on 2 Dingirsu, 0 Boros, Boral Sword, Access Code, Unicorn, Lib, Morningstar, 2 Galatee, Wyvern, Barricade Borg, Mask, Link Spider, and Almirage. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against the most powerful deck in the game, Sacred Beasts. What? Why are you all laughing? Uh, incidentally, on an unrelated note, I have three Magician Souls for trade if anyone's interested. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Foolish Burial, sending a Darkest Diabolos to Graveyard. Next, a Normal Summon a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast to get a 7 Spirit Gates. Use the extra Normal for Chaos Summoning. Activate 7 Spirit Gates for a Dark Summoning. Bring it back. Activate its effect for a copy of Hamon. Ooh, I like where this is going. Trigger the effect of Darkest Diabolos in Graveyard. Activate Skyfire. Then activate Dark Summoning in Graveyard to get a Raviel. They can summon by tributing the Chaos. Then activating Chaos's effect for a Fallen Paradise and drawing 
two cards. This is about as good as it gets for this deck. Okay, well, we still might be able to play through it. We'll special summon a copy of purple, and they shotgun the Veiler. No! We'll tag out in response for a blue, then special summon the blue and draw a couple of cards. Afterwards, we'll special summon a copy of indigo, and, I guess, move it before Link summoning a Morningstar. We're just fiending the gates at this point. We get a succession, we'll normal summon a Scrap Recycler, and... Wait, does Raviel make Scrap Recycler miss timing? Ridiculous. Well, we can still make Scrap Wyvern, so we'll activate its effect and get a Golem from deck. We'll bring back this copy of Scrap Recycler, which we will finally resolve before going into a Unicorn and tucking back this Fallen Paradise. After that, we'll go into a copy of Access Code Talker and activate its effect. We'll go to town on these Sacred Beasts. First, we're going to get the Hamon. Next, we're going to get the Raviel. And finally, we might as well get the Darkest Diabolos as well. We're going to bring back this copy of Scrap Golem again, activating its effect for another activation of this Scrap Recycler. We'll activate that effect in order to set a World Wand to Graveyard. Now we can go for Nightmare Setups. We'll activate World Wand getting back the Nightmare and then afterwards we can link summon a Galatee. We'll activate Galatee's effect, putting back the Morning Star so we can get an orchestrated Babel, and then overlaying for a Ding Girsu. Now that our opponent has nothing in defense, we might as well go to battle phase, and what do you know, they don't have anything to impede lethal. So it's time for game two, and our opponent's playing Sky Striker. Ah, Orchest versus Sky Striker. A simpler matchup from a simpler time. Ah, 2019. No Ad Emancipator or Eldritch. No COVID-19 super pandemic. No looming threat of fascism. Ah, well... Two out of three ain't bad. Our opponent's going first, let's see what they can accomplish. They're going to lead with a copy of Terraforming, getting an Area Zero from deck. They'll activate Pot of Desires, drawing a couple of cards off the top before activating Upstart Goblin to draw another. They'll activate Area Zero on a set card, finding off the top... Ugh, Ray, always. Wait, did they not head it? Maybe they banished two? Well, they go for a multi-roll, popping this area zero for a ray anyway. They'll set two and then at end phase activate ray's effect so they can go into Shizuku. We'll infip the Shizuku because I'm not dealing with that. Okay, we should be able to win from here. We'll go for a blue sky, drawing a couple of cards from our deck. I feel... Okay, well, that's still fine. We'll activate Machina Redeployment in order to get an Irradiator and a Megaform. We'll activate Irradiator's effect, pitching the Megaform, then Irradiator's effect to summon the Megaform from... Okay, that's fine. We'll just Foolish Burial for a copy of Nightmare and go for Orcist. We'll activate its effect to send a copy of World Legacy World 1, then bring back the Nightmare so we can link summon a Galatee. We'll go for Galatee and... Ah, Ghost Ogre too! Well, at the very least, I have called, so we're not worrying about that one. We're going to be able to set a copy of Babel here, and then afterwards we can overlay for Dingirsu, getting that pesky multi-roll off the table. Now, there's not much we can accomplish from this position, so I might as well just link summon a Mascarena and pass. For turn, our opponent draws an effect failure. They will proceed directly to the battle phase. I am shamefully slow on Mascarena, so I let them have it. They're going to go for Kagari here, adding the Widowing back to hand, and then at end phase, resolving the effect of Shizuku. Now at end phase, I can activate the effect of Symbol Skeleton in my graveyard, sent off the Nightmare to bring back the Dingirsu, and then Dingirsu's effect to get rid of the Widow Anchor so we can get in on our turn. Unfortunately, this is not a fantastic opportunity to do so. We're able to use Galatea in response to the effect Veiler here so we can set a copy of Orchest Return. Next, we'll overlay for Dingirsu. I just want to get this Nightmare back in circulation. We'll activate Orchestrated Return, and what do we find off the top of a Gizmech Orochi? We'll activate World Wand, but we we really don't have very many generics left. Barricade Borg Blocker is going to have to do it. We'll pass back to our opponent. They're going to go for a Shark Cannon, unfortunate. Oh god, they're taking Ding! Okay, well, there goes the Babel. They're going to go for Kagari afterwards, but they can't really do anything until they get this Ding off the table. In main phase two, they'll activate multi-roll targeting the Ding, allowing us an opportunity to go for a Ghost Ogre. They link into Zeke and then back into Shizuku, and then at end step, we'll activate Gizmech. Finally, we should have a window into this game. For turn, we draw a copy of Urgent Schedule. Doesn't matter. We're pitching it to get back Babel. We'll activate Babel here, then activate Gizmech Orochi's effect to destroy this copy of Shizuku. In response to their Ray effect, we'll use this copy of Nightmare to send a Symbol Skeleton so we can then get Ding out in a chain where they aren't aren't able to activate Kana's effect. Yu-Gi-Oh, ladies and gentlemen. We get in for just under lethal and pass it back to our opponent. They draw not Ray off the top. They're able to eat a significant portion of our board, but not out the Gizmech. For turn, we draw an Ash Blossom, and I think there's probably a way to lethal here, but I don't see it. I give my opponent one turn of leeway. They draw for turn and concede. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means. A best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Eldlich, and ugh, what is that? You sicko, wasn't Numeron controlling enough? 
Okay, well, they're going first. They're going to normal summon an inspector border, set three, and pass. Hilariously, the purple nightfall off the top means we can beat this. We're going to go into an Almirage, then special summon the purple nightfall, going to battle phase and attacking over the inspector border, popping off in main phase two by activating the effect of purple nightfall. We'll activate the effect of blue sky, searched off the purple to get a gear suit, then the effect of mech knight of the morning star, pitching the gear suit, and eating an infinite impermanence. One down, two to go. Next, we'll special summon an indigo eclipse, allowing us to link summon nightmare unicorn and get this nightmare out of our hand. It's met with the activation of a conquistador, but it's still shuffled back. We'll activate nightmare Nightmare's effect targeting our unicorn so we can send a world wand and special back the Nightmare. Next we'll make Galati and activate its effect so we can get an orchestrated return from our deck. We'll activate said return, pitching the last card in our hand, finding, oh, a redeployment, very good, and a golem, very bad. We can activate the effect of the Symbol Skeleton in Graveyard, bringing back Gearsu, and then the effect of Ding, putting this copy of Symbol Skeleton under itself before we make IP Mascarena. Our opponent's going to lead with an Eldritch the Golden Lord effect. Unfortunately, that means I have to go for Ding here, but unfortunately for our opponent, we can send their last remaining trap and because it doesn't float until the end phase, they aren't able to access the big golden boy. Well, this should be lethal. We'll lead with a copy of Machina Redeployment, and watch this. A Radiator pitching a copy of Metal Form is full combo. We'll activate a Radiator to bring back Megaform, and then Megaform's effect tributing itself for a Metal Cruncher. Metal Cruncher will reveal three copies of, you guessed it, Scrap Recycler. We're going to normal summon a copy of Scrap Recycler, activating its effect to send against Mechorochi, then using Wyvern's effect, bringing back the Scrap Recycler and sending it to the graveyard so we can activate its effect, summoning one from deck, and destroying our opponent's last card. This is well over lethal, even after they're able to get the Trap Monster. Boral Sword Dragon, folks. A fun, fair, and interactive card. So it's time for game two, and oh my god, I could not have gotten a better five card hand if I'd been allowed to pick it myself. Woo, that's strong. Well, our opponent's hand is looking extremely crusty. They're going to lead with a copy of Eldlixer of Black Awakening that summons an Eldlich from deck. They'll set two and pass back to me. Unfortunately for our opponent, we have the Lightning Storm, and... Oh, okay. Well, Golden Land Forever isn't the worst thing in the world. We'll activate Return. They'll activate Ash, but oh no! Did you use up all of your interaction before my normal summon? Let me introduce you to my old pal, Scrap Recycler! We'll activate its effect to sending a Jet Synchron, then bring back the Jet Synchron so we can make a Scrap Wyvern. We'll activate its effect to bring back the Scrap Recycler, then its second effect in order to summon a Fridge from deck and destroy the unfortunately unprotected Eldlich. We'll use Fridge's effect to bring back Recycler. This is Recycler effect number two. It's going to send a Wand. We'll use Lib's effect in order to set a copy of Succession from deck, which we will activate to bring back the Fridge once again. We'll activate the Fridge's effect, bring back the Recycler. That's Recycler number three for those of you keeping a tally at home, setting a copy of Nightmare. We'll go into Boral Sword Dragon, and we could extend further, but why add insult to injury? We'll activate World Wand to summon this copy of Nightmare in attack position, so we can attack with this copy of Boral Sword, this copy of Lib, and then activate its effect, turning the Nightmare to defense to get in for lethal. So we're back with the deck, and surprising no one, Orcist is still playable. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, realistically, this is the best the deck has felt in months. The starters are so numerous and so low investment that you're all but guaranteed to get your plays off either on the play or the draw outside of any non-buster setup. Two, boy, the blind second tools are insane. Tactical's crazy on the draw, especially when you get to change of heart and this deck can pop off with a single link too. Unfortunately, I didn't get to show it off very much, mostly because people kept conceding. And three, the different engines complement each other fantastically. The scraps are Earth for Citadel, the purples add additional follow-up to games where you establish parity, and Urgent Schedule makes Wyvern on its own. And the cons. One, yes, the tools for second are better now than they've ever been. That said, going second is worse than it's ever been. Draw all the droplets you want, Buster and Dweller will lurk. Two, the spell count is pretty low. This makes the Mech Knights hard if your opponent's smart. Thankfully, very few people are. And three, it's extremely hard to play. Lines are non-linear and you'll almost always be playing through disruption. It's extremely taxing and often goes to time, even if your games are only two turns long. All in all, this is great news for any Orcist pilots who have felt neglected the past few formats, though time will tell if the boards that Emancipator can build are good enough to resist the new tools for blinding second. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Harrison Karp, Alex Perea, Angel Ferox, Candyman, Crispy, Innercrest, Mike Carlotti, Seeker, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amir Elefandi, LG Smarson Cavizius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Blue Boy, Chad Bortz, Chibi Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Connor Kid, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Tevs, Devin Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Fillerup, Don Coro, Distrin Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Gustavo Sicon, Isaac Jackson, Jane Linya, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jell Durado, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaiba Corp Shill, Corey Hess, Kurakaze, Lavender Lemonade, Lawrence, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Meds for Feds, Michael Oscavara, Kamiuna Arashi, Moira Brownwolf, Nick Extreme 99, 
9, Nyx Dolores, Pro Yugi Dad, Pro FB2, Samsung, Second, Shane Meadow Edits, Pronga, Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Tim Holloway, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchuski, Zach McKee, Bleh, Dive Missile, Josh, Picnic Blastic, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and Yuki A. As always, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.